Now will you notice verse 38? And they said, Lord, behold, here are two swords. And he said unto them, it's enough. You don't need to overdo this thing. You don't need to make your home today an armed garrison. But you do need to protect yourself. I think that today it's pretty silly to take the guns away from law-abiding citizens and anyone knows that the lawless ones are going to get a gun. Believe me, you'd certainly put the law-abiding folk in a pretty awkward situation. And I'm not sure, but that's what some folk would like to do. Now let me move on into another area altogether. It's not maybe controversial in the way, and yet today it's one of the most misunderstood portions of the Word of God and that's the experience of our Lord in the Garden of Gethsemane. Now, I need to remind myself as we come to the Garden of Gethsemane that the place on which we're standing is holy ground here in this gospel. I need to remove my spiritual shoes as I stand on this sacred spot and remove my spiritual hat as I gaze in rapture Upon him. Now, when I hear today people singing glibly, I'll go with him through the garden, I just want to say to you, I can't sing anything or any way, but I wouldn't sing that. I couldn't sing that. I can't go with him through the garden. The best I can do is just stand on the outside and listen to the drops of blood as they fall from him and hear his cry, and somehow or another try to enter into the meaning. And I'm confident I can't enter in to the meaning. And I'm sorry that I can't take you all the way into the garden today. Maybe someone else can, but I cannot. I wonder today, these folks who are singing, I'll go with them through the garden. I wonder if they know what they're saying. I feel confident that they do not know the meaning of the Garden of Gethsemane, or many of these sincere people wouldn't sing that. It's a form of blasphemy for a person to say or sing, I'll go with him through the garden, and then make excuses when difficulties arise, and they drop out of church and stay away from service at the drop of the hat or a drop of rain. It doesn't take much. I can never sing that song. We shall go to the garden, but shall not enter. The Lord left his disciples outside. I'll stay out there with them and peer over the wall into the darkness and listen to the travail of his soul. Then if our hearts are sensible, then we shall thank God for the one who pressed the cup of our sorrow and our suffering to his lips and drank to the very dregs We'll not be able to penetrate the darkness of that garden nor understand the full significance of all that took place. You remember yonder in the upper room, he passed the cup and said, Take that cup. When I partake of the Lord's Supper, I always taste that cup. And everywhere I've ever tasted, it's been a sweet cup. He bore the bitter cup that I might have a sweet cup. Now, there's a mystery and a depth in that garden. There's not ambiguity or obscurity, but there's a mystery. And we'll do well just to worship as we behold him yonder and catch the note of his voice. You see, now we see through a glass darkly. It was Gregory Nazianzen who years ago wrote, I love God because I know him. I adore him because I cannot comprehend him. And so I worship at the Garden of Gethsemane, and I don't try to have all the answers. Let me read now these first two verses. And he came out and went as he was wont to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples also followed him. And when he was at the place, he said unto them, Pray that ye enter not into temptation. Now, there are two expressions here that are quite interesting. The first one is, as he was wont, and then at the place. Now, apparently, he didn't stay in the city at night. We've already seen that in the so-called triumphal entry. 
and the city had rejected him, and he rejected the city. He spent every night that last week in the Garden of Gethsemane or went on into Bethany. I do not know which. Now, we find here that after the Lord's Supper, why, he went out to the garden. And that last night, an unfamiliar transaction took place in the garden. I'm not sure I know all of it, but he wrestled with an unseen foe. That's obvious. He overcame the enemy there. He gained the victory. And the victory of Calvary was won in Gethsemane. You see, at the beginning of the ministry of our Lord, Satan came and tempted him and offered him at that time the kingdoms of the world. He'd have to miss the cross, of course. And then we're told, Dr. Luke told us, that Satan left him for a season. Now, when did he come back? I presume many times. And at the end of his ministry, it was the temptation of Satan at the beginning of his ministry that he avoid the cross, and now it's the temptation of Satan again. And then you'll recall that during his ministry, Peter said to him when he mentioned the cross, Far be it from thee, Lord. And our Lord said, Get thee behind me, Satan. Satan's theology, friend, has no place for the cross of Christ. And it was Satan who came again. Now, will you notice what he said here? Pray that ye enter not into temptation. Now, I just pick up a few of the fragments here. What was the temptation? Who was going to tempt him? Well, Satan was going to be there, I believe. Now, let me read verse 41. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast. Now, how far can you throw a stone? Well, that's about how far he went ahead of them. And he kneeled down and prayed, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Now, what was this cup? That's caused quite a bit of discussion, I'll tell you. I do not wish to be dogmatic here, but there are those that say he was afraid he would die before he got to the cross. I do not believe that. I do not see the sense of it. There's no merit in a Roman cross, friends. Just a cross has no merit in it at all. And I think it actually was just an upright, but be that as it may, there's no merit in the wood. Merit is in the one who died. And if he died on the gallons or in the electric chair, it would have had just as much value. If Christ had died in the Garden of Gethsemane, it would have been Christ who died for us. The merit is in the person of the one who died for me. And the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. It was on the cross that he shed his blood and died. Now, I'll tell you what I think. The cup was the cross. I do not mean the suffering of death. I mean this. He was made sin for us, and he's the Holy One of God. And when my sin was put upon him, it was repulsive. I don't know why we think we're so attractive to God today. My sin put on Christ was repulsive. It was awful. It was terrible. And he rebelled for a moment against. And it was in the garden under the shadow of the cross that the tempter came to offer him once more the crown without the cross. And he came to do the Father's will. And therefore, will you listen to him here? Verse 42, If thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will but thine be done. He came to do the Father's will, and he commits himself to the Father's will. But my friend, my sin was repulsive on him, and yours didn't help either. Now, will you notice we have in verse 43, And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. Angelic ministry was at the temptation in the desert, and now it's in the garden. Luke alone records this, by the way.